Shalom Aleichem. As we get to uh, a few days before the Chag HaShavuot, the holiday of receiving the Torah, the holiday where we are elevated to the utmost level of wisdom, of connection, and we prepare ourselves like uh, our forefathers prepare themselves also. We know that three days or six days, it's a machloket by the Chachamim, before Matan Torah, we had to take a step back and start reflecting on this special day, this unique moment in history. As we know, we say it every day, that the Torah, the wisdom of the Torah, is part of us and an obligation upon each and every one of us to learn, to connect to, and to elevate ourselves from. Every single day. It's our life. It's our essence. The Torah is our DNA. What defines us, what represents us, what dictates our actions, our deeds, our morality, our thought process, our behavior, education. It's everywhere. It's everything. So the obvious question that we should all ask is the following. If the Torah is so imminent and so present and part of our lives, why are we, or the Torah, makes the event of Matan Torah, of receiving the Torah so important, a holiday? Do we make a holiday for breathing? Do we make a holiday for eating? We don't. Well, the Torah is the same thing. It's as if we breathe, as if we eat. So why is there such an important holiday that's called Shavuot, where we celebrate receiving the Torah? As we know, and we're going to be saying in the, the prayers, of the Chag Shavuot, we call, the Chachamim call, this moment, Zeman, a time, a period, a moment, Matan Torah Tenu, where we received the Torah. The reality is that there is an obligation to receive the Torah, to accept wisdom, to accept knowledge from God every single day. It's not something we just celebrate or connect to once a year. So why is that moment such an important moment? So Rabbi Yerucham teaches us in the beginning of the first Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, Perik Vav, in the sixth Perik. Chachamim say, Bless is the one that shows wisdom, that shows teach, the, 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 the knowledge, the teaching of the Torah. Says Rabbi Yerucham, what, is that, what does that mean, Baruch? Blessed is. He explains that there is a prerequisite to knowledge. There is a prerequisite to Torah. There is something that you need to have in order to be able to connect, to connect to that infinite wisdom that God showers upon each and every one. It's the importance to value, to respect, to elevate knowledge. There is one thing, the knowledge, fantastic. But there is something beyond the actual knowledge and what you need to have in order to be able to connect to that knowledge, the key to the safe of knowledge is the respect and value that you should have for the Chokhmah, for the Torah.
it's it's a perspective it's a guidance in the approach one must have when he learns torah when he connects to torah when he opens a gemara it's not just to acquire the knowledge it's to understand how holy how fundamental how real, how factual, how accurate the Torah is. It's an, not just a science. It's the word of Hashem. It's Hashem revealing Himself to us. God is revealing Himself to us through that wisdom, through that knowledge. So we need, in order, in order to celebrate Shavuot properly, we need to approach that day with the understanding, with the awe of the value it has in our lives. We spoke until now about the importance of growing, of flourishing, of blossoming, unveiling the Ani that's in me, the ability to learn to connect so that on that day I can connect to everyone since each and every one has their own count of the 49 days to be able to get to that focal point that everybody connects to Chag Shavuot. But we can only on a personal level absorb that light that's shining upon each and every one of us if we understand how much we have to appreciate, respect, value that light, that moment. This is what we must think about and connect and understand in those, those days, those three days that are bringing us closer to Shavuot really internalize, but really, how much does the Torah mean to you? How much the wisdom, the clarity, the, 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 the depth of the Torah impacts you? Changes you, makes you a better person. Say Rabbi Yerucham, depending on how impactful and how moved you are from the importance of that day, the importance of having such a well, an abundant well of wisdom, only dependent on how deep you connect to it, will you be able to absorb like a vessel the light of wisdom that God is showering upon us on that day. Shavuot. Now we're going to try to understand a little bit better how come, how come that day is really such an important day for us. So we said that there is a prerequisite to value it and that's probably one of the reasons Hashem gave us that day as a holiday. Because if it wasn't a holiday, then you take it for granted. Like we age and every one of us take for granted that there's oxygen in the air and that we can breathe and that there will be food on the table one way or another. So in order not to take for granted wisdom, but not just wisdom, not just knowledge, but the wisdom of the Torah, the wisdom of Hashem, Hashem made it today, a special day. Do not take for granted my presence in your life. Do not take for granted my influx of love, my influx of mercy upon you each and every day and all the time. But you need to acknowledge that it's not taken for granted. Therefore, we will celebrate the day I reveal myself to you as a day of connection and a point of reference to that tremendous abundance. Now how, how to approach the day? 
how to connect on that day. Let's, we have to go back on what happened on Mat during Matan Torah. So when we pray to Hashem for the ultimate redemption on Musaf of Shabbat, we say Ketev. And in what we pray, what we ask from Hashem is please bring us back once again to that moment of revelation, that moment of connection. This is what we pray for and this is what redemption means to us. Let's revive and let's re-experience, but once and forever, Matan Torah, Shavuot. On that day, on that specific day, the rabbis tell us that when Hashem wanted to talk to each and every one of us, as a nation, as a people, as a world, God revealed himself in the world. The rabbis say, the birds stop quaking, stop flying, animals stop eating, stop talking, stop moving, angels stop praising God. The entire creation from top to bottom, bottom to top, froze, completely froze. And then God spoke and revealed himself. This freezing of the entire creation needs to be understood. In order to understand why we freeze, we need to understand why we make movements. So our rabbis teach us that there are two types of movement, two types of actions. There's an action that leads to a purpose, fundamental, important. And then there are actions that are future. They have no, no real essence, no reasoning behind them, no true value to them. It's an action in vain. So our rabbis tell us, those actions that are in vain are bringing a person back to the essence of tohu vavohu, of almost chaos, of confusion. When a person just acts to act and there's no purpose in his actions, he brings upon himself the darkness of confusion, a place where it is extremely difficult to see the light. But as we mentioned in the past, those are the fruits of his actions. However, when a person does an action in order to get to a specific purpose, whether it's directly or indirectly bringing his, his, him closer to the purpose, it is something that's essential, something that's important. Once you get to that point, it's finished. There's no point of action because you reach your goal you reach your destination. So these two types of actions can take you or to your destination where you need to be or to chaos and darkness. On that day, on the day we received the Torah, the entire creation that was moving, that was acting, that was behaving, that was developing, evolving, was gravitating towards one purpose, a purpose for God, for Hashem to reveal himself to the creation. So it is obvious that once you reach your goal, there's no more reason to make any actions. The entire world stopped. It didn't stop in order to hear. It stopped because Hashem heard, started talking. So his revelation, was, if you will, the end goal of the entire creation until that moment. And what we are saying, and what we are praying, is Hashem, please bring back, please bring back that moment.
but we need a little bit more depth. Because what is required is to get to a point of completion. Who really gets to a full destination? We keep on running and going and going, hoping that we get to a destination. We have to know that as I mentioned in the beginning of the shiur, of this class, our rabbis, the Anshek Neset Agedola, instituted in the prayer that we say on Shavuot, Zeman Matan Torah Ten, the time of Matan Torah, where we receive the Torah. But interestingly enough, the Magen Avraham, which was a big commentator on the Shulchan Aruch, has a question, and he doesn't understand why we call this Matan, Zeman Matan Torah Ten. It doesn't make sense, he says. But he says, what can we do? We follow the Minhag, the custom of the Rambam, who said that this is, this is how, what he was saying. So everybody aligned themselves with Maimonides and his custom. And therefore, we all say Zeman Matan Torah Ten. Which means that there was before the Rambam or during at the time of the Rambam another another nusak, another way of saying the prayer, not like we say today. The Ramban in Sefer Vaikha tells us the following. that Zeman Matan Torah was really the end of the exile of Egypt. The exile of Egypt started when we left, but really was completed. We really became free. The true freedom happened on Matan Torah on the day we received the Torah on Shavuot. So according to the Ramban, we should really be saying Zeman Cherutenu, the day of the true freedom. This is really the day that's, that we're celebrating, a day of freedom, true freedom. This is what we're about to celebrate in a few days, each and everyone's freedom on a personal level, on a national level, on a people's level, on a global level, and on a universe level. Hashem brings the power of freedom. Since, as I mentioned, this is what happened on Shavuot. So the Zeman Matan Torah, basically what we're really saying, in other words, the day we received the Torah is the day we received the Torah and we became free. Or we freed ourselves, we reached freedom by receiving the Torah. This is the celebration. But what is the definition of freedom? What are we free from? So, in Matan Torah, what do we say? What do Pasuk say? The Pasuk, the verse says, that Ra'u et akolot, the people saw the sound, saw the voices. How can you see vo a voice? You can hear a voice. So the rabbis say there was a miracle on that day where people all saw what they heard and heard what they see. Puzzle. But when you dive into the concept of what those rabbis are teaching us, you're gonna find something tremendous. There are two ways to approach wisdom. There are two ways to connect to the Torah. Way number one, through Shmi'a, through listening. When you wanna understand something, you hear, you listen to the words of wisdom and you internalize them. But the process is sequential. What does that mean? That means that there has to be 
word after word after word after word that together make a sentence for you to be able to process it. But if I take, or if somebody could take, if it was possible to really compress all the words in one word at one moment, it, was be, it would be impossible to understand. The Torah says, this is one way of approaching chokhmah, approaching wisdom, approaching the Torah, approaching a situation in life, is analyzing it bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit, and slowly, slowly absorbing it and being able to understand what to do about it. But there is also another way to approach the Torah, to approach wisdom. It's through the sight, through looking, through learning through your eyes. The power of the eyes that it grasps a global and more panoramic view of things. You can see a lot of different informations that are in front of you and get a bigger picture of the scenario and the situation that you're facing. The Torah tells us that Am Israel was able to see what they heard and hear what they saw. There was a perfect harmony in the tools that each and every one of us has to be able to now approach the Torah, the wisdom, the situation, the life, without being under any restrictions that we have set on ourselves in order to be able to protect and assure that we have a channel to the Torah, a channel to the wisdom. The Torah, this is a day, Rabotai, where the freedom is amazing. It's not a freedom, well, I don't have somebody on top of me. I don't have somebody controlling my life. No, that's not it. It's a, it's a freedom of wisdom. It's a freedom of knowledge. It's a freedom within us that allow us to utilize the sequential process of a situation versus the global assessment of a situation. Some people need every bit of a situation in order to be able to analyze it. And if they don't have step by step, they're lost. Others, no, they want the global picture. They need to, they need to see everything in front of them, have a panoramic view. And only then can they process. One without the other, is a handicap because there are situations where you have pieces by pieces that you can assess and you have situations where you don't have all the pieces and you need a macro evaluation in order to be able what to, to know what to do in life how to approach life this is matan torah this is the freedom we're celebrating the freedom of the ability to approach and address wisdom, address the Torah. But this, as we said earlier in the beginning of the shiur, can only happen if we value with the tremendous gift of the Torah, that is the Torah. The value, the the unbelievable gift that has been sent to each and every one of us that is called the Torah, that is called wisdom. It's the freeing of a handicap that forces us every day of our life again and again to have to approach a situation a certain way and be forced to react a certain way. Here, we're opening ourselves. Opening ourselves. Just by cherishing, just by loving, appreciating, being in awe of that amazing blessing, amazing gift. We free ourselves and suddenly we have and obtain and gain the ability to use both tools both qualities 
that need to work hand in hand in life. This is the beauty of Shavuot. This is the beauty of the Torah. This is what we are celebrating. Rabotai, a few days to go. Baruch Hashem, for the past few months, we have been together learning every week the importance of building yourself from the most basic level all the way to freeing your perspective, your intellectual perspective, and being able to look at the situation from every angle possible. It is time now that we, all of us and together celebrate that moment. This will allow us to see fantastic things in life, to understand the most amazing secrets that are hidden, that are in front of our eyes each and every single day, but we, that we cannot see because we don't allow ourselves to see. Once a year, Rabotai, once a year, we are blessed with an opportunity to unleash, unleash the true us that's in us, the me that's in us. Now is the time. You are, it ha, this has to vibrate inside of you. Rabotai, we have to jump, we have to dance, we have to thank, we have to kiss Hashem for all this opportunity, all this love, the ability to drill and break every layer of, of the mundane, secular outlook of life and see God in the most simple form. Hashem is not in, only in the shul, only in synagogues. He's not only when you learn Torah, He's with you at all times. On Shavuot, He says, please, let me allow you to see me. Please, hear Put these glasses on, wear them, see me, love me, care for me. This is what Hashem is telling us, not us to Him. Hashem is telling us, I love you here, please, please look at me. Please acknowledge me. How can you acknowledge Hashem? Through the wisdom, the Rambam says, the king that resides on top of a person is Hashem. It's the connection, the, the intellect that Hashem gives to each and every one of us to be able to understand everything. Are we ready? Is this something we really want? The clock is ticking. Yemei Hagbala, the days of our preparations are now in front of us. And it is our obligation, Rabotai, I beg you, I beg you, everybody's talking about Mashiach. Everybody's talking when, what's going to happen. We're all busy understanding everything that's happening around creation. But let's focus on the essential. Let's focus on a day that will change each and every one of our lives. Each and every one of you will change forever. Only if you're able to appreciate this amazing gift. And during the day of Shavuot, the days of Shavuot, be able, be able to introspect and reflect on yourself and say, I want to be able to see Hashem. Please open my eyes. I'm ready. Put the glasses on. Doesn't matter. It's always going to be fashionable. Just put them on. Let me see you. Ask Hashem to allow you to see Him. Tell Him how much you want Him in your life. How much you hurt that you pushed them away. And I promise you, this is the true redemption. And each and every one of us that reaches that place, that moment of redemption, that essence of redemption, can now appreciate the Ruach, the spirit of Mashiach.
and allow others to become like that also. This is what we wanted to reach. This is where we wanted to get for all this time when we learn level by level, level by level. So I wish each and every one of you, since on Thursday night it will be the Chag, we will not be able to have a Shi'ur. I wish each and every one of you Chag Sameach. May Be'ezrat Hashem, you connect to Hashem. May you see Hashem as clearly as possible. May you feel Him with you all the time. May you love wisdom. May you love the Torah. May you appreciate how amazing and how lucky we are to have the Torah. And Be'ezrat Hashem, reconnect after the Chag on a complete different level for a complete different mission and the ability to now take all this light that will be showering, shining upon us and implementing it day by day to make a difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives that all our beloved ones and all the ones that are looking at us or that are in our lives. Chag Sameach, I love you all and I bless you all with all the berachot of the Torah, ah, the Torah Daika and Yehi Ratzon. Yehi Ratzon. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu annul, dissolve, and erase the Eved, the concept of Eved, the concept of a servant in each and everyone's heart and allow the Ani, the Him that's in me, to shine and shine forever. Chag Sameach. Love you all.